just the blood for me. Praise the Lord. We thank God for another communion Sunday. We just had communion here in the Philadelphia Deliverance Tabernacle for those of you that are watching uh, later on at home. We, we thank God for you. And, and uh, I encourage you to find some, some, some form of bread or some form of grape uh, juice, uh, juice drink, and, and have communion with the Lord. Remember the, what God did for us and sending his son, Jesus Christ, not only to wash away our sins, yes, yes. which would have been enough, because our sins are washed away, we can spend an eternity in heaven. Yes. And I don't know about you, but I've heard heaven was a pretty nice place. Uh, yes. uh, yeah, it's, it's nicer than uh, Hollywood and Beverly Hills or all those other places. It's way better than that. It's better than Dubai and the yes. great cities we hear around the world. It's better than that. Yes. And that would have been enough. But yes. Jesus didn't stop there. He said, my body was broken, yes. that your body would be healed. Yes. Yes. Amen. And I, I don't know why, but I, I uh, the church, since the time of Jesus, has not really pushed in on that healing thing. They pushed hard on the, 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 the blood of Jesus washing away our sins, and that's great. That's, that's the most important thing. Jesus himself said, you know, uh, what doth it profit a man to gain the whole world and die and lose his only soul? He said, you can go to heaven with one eye and one leg. But if your soul's not right, if you're not washed in the blood of Jesus, you can't make it there. But God, Jesus said, I didn't, I didn't want to stop there. I want to bless you even more than that. I want you to be healed, whole, healthy here in this life. We thank God for uh, our um, awesome praise and worship this morning. And I was just thinking uh, the cantata, I uh, talked to Pastor Peter Joe yesterday, he was telling me the situation with the, the Christmas cantata being canceled, the national tour, uh, some 34, I think, venues having to be canceled and still having to pay the down payment that uh, it costs to uh, rent them. And I'll just go ahead and tell you what happened. Uh, the choir that sings in the cantata comes from South Korea, a Christian choir. Every year they do a two month tour in the United States uh, and go back to South Korea. Uh, for 10 years they've done this, and <coughs> this year our current administration decided they didn't want a Christian choir to come wow. to the United States wow. and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Wow. I was tempted to tell Pastor Peter, just fly him into Mexico and walk him across the border, <laughs> and they'll each get paid to come in yes. and get signed. Yes. Uh, but no, I didn't want to be sarcastic. Yeah get him in trouble, but he said they're still fighting to get them over here and it may be rescheduled for the months of December and January. Uh, so we'll, he wants us to be praying with him and praying for him. Uh, but tremendous, tremendous loss of, of money uh, because of scheduling, what have you. But God is good. Yes. And God is greater. Yes. Jesus. God is greater. I can tell you some things that you would not believe that our current administration is doing against Christians. Yeah. It's horrendous. But we're not here to talk about that. We're talking about good news today. Yeah. That's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about good news. And God is still good yeah. in spite of it all. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we're going to be talking about the valley of decision. Mm -hmm. The valley of decision. Turn quickly with me uh, to Joel 3. And we'll begin at verse 12. Joel chapter 3, verse 12. God is awesome. Wow. I'm seeing some amazing things. I'm, I'm learning so much by this teaching. Uh, it's, it's awesome. I can't wait to, to get into it. And, and I get a little carried away in my studying and writing. So uh, when it gets to pages 5 and 6, I have to make the font smaller so I can... Say, tell my wife, I only got two pages today, but I got went real hard to read it. <laughs> Amen. Joel chapter 3, and while you're uh, turning, uh, stick your finger in the book of Revelation. We talked about Revelation chapter 3 last week, and we're going to go back there and kind of tie things together. Uh, this may very well be a two-part message, 
um, but we'll have to continue after Women's Day next week. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sunday off next week. Hey, praise the Lord. Uh, no, not you. Not you. No, no. Don't misunderstand me. You're all expected to be here with ten of your best friends. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'll be here next Sunday, yes, celebrating the goodness of our Lord. Joel chapter 3, verse 12 reads, Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in, a, put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, go now, for the wine press is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Revelation chapter 3. Uh, 14th verse, Revelation 3, 14. And the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, the things, these things say the amen, the faithful and true witness. The beginning of creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I could wish you were, I, well, yeah. I could wish you were hot or were cold or hot, yeah, New King James says cold, could, it, it threw me off too. I could uh, wish that you were cold or hot, verse 16. So then, because you were lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich with white garments and that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous to repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. On Friday night in Kingdom Seekers, good question came up. Are there different levels of reward in heaven, right? That's what we talked about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we said, yes, there are different rewards. And, and I, I said, there are 22 times in the book of Revelations, it says, to them that overcome, mm -hmm. you're given a, a reward, a prize, an extra. Yeah, it's great to just make it in. That's a gift of salvation. You, just have, you don't have to do anything much but say yes to Jesus. And he gives you the gift of salvation. But to get the rewards, you have to do some things. A uh, reward is similar to a prize, not the same, but similar. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which I find in Christ Jesus. And I'm forgetting about those things which are behind me. And I'm pressing forward. Uh, so you have to do a little something. There's some effort that has to be made to receive the prize. And, and all of those 22 rewards in heaven are linked to overcoming. You see, we explained on Friday night that uh, you have an opportunity here in this life that you won't have in, in glory. See, in glory, it's going to be easy to praise the Lord. It's going to be easy to be thankful and grateful and joyous and shouting all the time. And, and I heard someone say uh, a few years ago, they said, you know, I have all the fruit of the Spirit. I'm so excited about it until I left my house. <laughs> then all of a sudden, I realized I didn't have all the fruits of the Spirit. That long suffering was long gone, and, and that patience was out the window, and, and all that, because there's, there's things that we need to overcome, because our first reaction to when someone spits uh, in our face, or, or, or slaps us, or says some mean things about us, or cuts us off in our car, our natural tendency is not the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> I heard one lady said, uh, I saw this man cut off this, this poor little old lady who's seemingly struggling to drive, and she's just grinning from ear to ear, and, and, and then she cuts someone else off because she swerved to uh, avoid this other person. 
and, and she sees this guy sticking his hand out the window, giving her a one-finger wave, and she said, oh, yes, one way to Jesus, He's, he must be saved. And then she said, and he's so happy, he said something about sunny beaches. Uh, well, that <laughs> wasn't exactly, but, but that's the kind of mindset we, we have to force our body into. Uh, the First Corinthians talks about the love chapter. It's talking about uh, loveth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. We're to see things through the lens of Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, we're going to get there. Um, that was extra. I just threw that in. I looked up the word Laodicea, and I, I discovered something. I've heard of this. I've read this passage many times, and I looked up the word Laodicea to see what it actually meant. It actually means people making decisions. That's what Laodicea actually means, people making decisions. Uh, the people here in Laodicea said they were lukewarm. They heard the choices, but they weren't making the decisions. They were chill. You know, uh, I, God says, I'd rather you hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll, uh, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And, and on one occasion, I, I forget the specifics of what I felt like the Lord was asking me to do and, and said, if you do this, I'll do that. And I said, uh, no, I'm cool. <laughs> and I then thought later, being cool is that similar to being lukewarm. I was neither hot nor cold. I was, you know, content. I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't want to uh, stir the pot, as they say. I didn't want to cause any trouble. Uh, but sometimes we have to step out of the boat yes. if we're going to get to where God wants us to be. And that's what I want to encourage you today, to get out of this valley of decision. Uh, in the Old Testament, there was a covenant, Old Testament, Old Covenant, that God had made with the people. And I know many of you are familiar with Deuteronomy 28 and 29. 28 tells all the goody goodies uh, about uh, what the people were promised by God. And you've got songs about it. You know, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. Yeah, they got a whole song about all the blessings of the Lord. But then it says, that's what you get if you obey and keep my commandments. But he said, if you fail to keep my commandments, you're cursed in the city. You're cursed in the field. You're cursed when you come and when you go. That don't sound so fun, does it? I don't think that one will sell. And if I sing the good part, it wouldn't sell either. Anyway, um, but it was all on a condition. But, but it was a good, it, it was pretty good if, if you kept the condition. Um, uh, in, where is it? In Exodus, when they come right out of Egypt, you know, Moses delivers the people from uh, uh, slavery of Egypt, and they're thirsty in the desert, in the wilderness. And they get to this place called Marah, and they see water, but the water is bad. It's, and, and Moses uh, prays, and the Lord says, throw this tree in the water, and the water becomes pure, and and they begin to drink, and, and then there at Mara, Mara means bad or, or, or uh, yeah, bad. Uh, he promised, he said, if you would diligently listen to my voice and hearken unto all, hearken to keep all of my statutes. Mm -hmm. This is the promise he made. He said, I'll put none of the diseases that you found in Egypt on you while you're out of the wilderness. Wow, another good promise. If you do all the things that I command you to do, you'll have none of those diseases. He goes further in Exodus 23, verses 25 through 26. You don't have to turn there, but it says, so you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you, and no one shall suffer a miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. That was what God promised to the children of Israel if they kept all the commandments. They would not be sick. Ain't that something? Yes. Would not be sick. Would not suffer sickness and diseases. Uh, well, you'll not have miscarriages. You'll have children, plenty of children. You'll live the, the full length of days that you're supposed to live. So many lives being cut short. Yeah. But the promise to them in the old covenant, that's what the promise was. You don't have to be sick. You just have to keep all the commandments. 
You just have to do everything I said to the last detail. If you mess up, if you're guilty of one, you're guilty of them all. Lord. All promises are off. Then you're cursed. You receive the curse. I thought about this show. You see, today you have you know 3,000 channels, and I just heard the other day it takes the average person 10 minutes to find something to watch because there's so many options. So you sit down at the TV, and for the first 10 minutes, you're just channel surfing. There's got to be something better than that. And you go through and you watch a few seconds of about six, seven, eight, nine, ten shows before you settle on one. But when I was a kid, during the summer, especially on the rainy days, I know you might not believe this, but we did have a TV, and TV was invented. Uh, after the morning cartoons, and after Captain Kangaroo went on, and then they had this little news spot, but then they had a, a few cartoons, but then they had the game shows and the soap operas. Well, the soap operas, I was in no interest whatsoever. And you either had to watch soap operas or game shows. Mm -hmm. So when we couldn't go outside in the summertime, we'd sit and watch, let's make a deal. <laughs> I, I didn't realize it, but they recently revived that show. Uh, I know you don't remember that, because you're too remember to, young to remember what was his name, Monty Hall? Yeah. He said, come on, let's make a deal. Yeah. He said, would you rather have what's in my pocket or what's behind door number one? Mm -hmm. And then they make a choice. He said, would you like to trade that for what's behind door number two or door number three? Mm -hmm. And you know, they have three choices. Often there are three doors. And, and he would say, OK, you pick door number one. Let's hear what's behind door number two and three. So they would go on to say, you know, behind door number two, is a $50 gift certificate to Bob's Big Boys. Yay! <laughs> Behind door number uh, three, there's a, let's see, I did write some examples down, but I, I can't read them now. Uh, behind door number three, there's, I don't know, uh, $500 cash. Yay! But you didn't ch choose either of those. You chose door number one. Okay, let's see what's behind door number one. And then they start playing the music. And they open up door number one. You've won $1,500 of Monopoly money and a get out of jail free card. And the crowd goes wild. Well, today I've got good news. We only have two doors today. And I'm going to tell you what's behind both doors before you get to choose. You're in the valley of decision. You got to choose today. I've already told you what's behind door number one. Door, door number one, you can live without sickness and diseases. No sickness and diseases come upon you. You'll not, no longer experience miscarriage. You'll live your full life here on earth. It won't be cut short. You, you'll always have, he said, I'll bless your, your water and your bread. I, and I take that to mean because you know what? They're putting all kinds of junk in our water and bread. Someone told me they're trying to devise a way to, to genetically infuse the COVID vaccine into the wheat and into dairy products. So you don't know what you're eating. But God says, I'm going to bless it and protect it. No deadly thing uh, shall harm you. No, whatever you eat or drink, any deadly poison, and it shall not harm That's essentially what he's telling them. He said, whatever you eat or drink, it's going to be blessed. Yes, yes. First of all, because I know you all bless your food before you eat it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that's what's behind door number one. But there's a big condition. He said, if you keep all of the commandments, you got to do that. you got to keep all the commandments. This uh, Last week, I began to tell you about uh, the Jewish New Year coming up. It's coming up uh, in about two weeks. Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. Um, uh, and someone said, you know, why do you talk about all that Jewish stuff? I thought you were Christians. Well, truth be told, I'm going to let you in on a secret. Christianity is just the next evolution of Judaism. We're serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, just like the Jews are. And the Jews taught all their children, all their lives, Messiah is coming. The only problem is, the Christians, hopefully, the only difference within Jew and the Christians are that we recognize the Messiah that they did. Yeah. 
God, if you read the Bible, says he's put a veil over their eyes because they first thought, you know, you had to be related to Abraham. Mm -hmm. But he put a veil over their eyes, allowed them to miss the Messiah. The Messiah, Jesus, is Jewish. Amen. And so we as Christians, we have been grafted in to Judaism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just happen to call ourselves Christians. We serve the same God, just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Muslims, those other folks, they serve other gods. Yeah. Just to be clear. So uh, uh, this, this year that we're currently in, in the Jewish calendar, is year 5783. We talked about that. Uh, the 80 in the Jewish, well, they don't have numbers, but they have letters representing the numbers. 80 means pay or mouth. And we've been saying what we say, what comes out of our mouth, is so important yes, in this yes, decade. Yes. And... The three, we said last year, is the letter Gimel, which refers to camels or the coming of camels. And I've been saying, watch what you say. Begin to practice saying what God says. Saying and declaring what you want over your life. Because there's going to come a time when it's going to come to pass. You see, it's the same with sin. My dad used to always say, you know, you can sin in installment plans. You can sin now and pay later. And it's the same with your blessings. You can invest in God. Say, so God, I'm paying my tithes. I'm giving my offerings. I'm showing up to the prayer meetings. I'm sometimes having to say no to some friends and no to some, some things. When you ask me to, I'll give up a meal here and there. I'm sacrificing now. I'm bringing my body under subjection now because there's going to come a time when I'm going to need you. Yes. I'm going to need to draw on you. And so that's the year 5783, and that comes to an end September 15th at sundown. And we enter into 5784. It's still in the 80s. 80s still the, the decade of the mouth. But four is the year of the door. I love the, the letter, it's the letter Dilet, which actually means poor or bent over or humility. Because they lived in tents, it often signified when they went through the door, they had to bend over. And bending over was a symbol of being humble. It's not a time to brag and boast, but it's a time to be humble before your God. And so that's what we're entering into, the year that the doors open and we're entering in through the door. And so I, I was looking to see what the, the modern day uh, rabbis were saying. And they, they said the year 5783 is the year of decision. That's where we are right now. We're in the year of decision. We're, year, we're deciding what our future is going to look like. We're hearing the news. They're saying depression is coming, recession is coming, scarcity is coming. Uh, you're not going to be able to drive your cars. You're not going to be able to afford gasoline. They're saying we're going to have rolling blackouts because there's not going to be enough energy to heat your homes in the winter and to cool your homes in the summer. That's what they're saying. They're saying that uh, the unemployment is going to rise and, and the, the seas are going to rise and, and New Jersey is going to disappear and, and, and Florida is going to be flooded and California is going to fall into the ocean. There's going to be great earthquakes, climate change change, climate change, quick, where's Elon Musk with the rocket to Mars? The world is telling you, you know, uh, get some dehydrated water, hide in the cave, you'll get the dehydrated water okay. later on. Uh, but I'm saying that God is saying, it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what actually happens because you're my children. And because I warned you in 2083 to make some good decisions. I can hear my sister right now. She teaches an elementary school uh, a class, and she's been telling her son it was cute when he was little, but now he's a grown man. She's got to make good choices. That's what she tells the kids in school. you got to make good choices. And it's true. It's true not only for four-year-olds, it's true for 40 years old and 80-year-old. We still have to make good choices because 
We're, we're not really human beings, we're really human becomings. Whatever we seize we sow today, we harvest tomorrow. We are where we are today because of the seeds we have sown in the past. Because of the decisions we made in the past. If you don't like where you are, you've heard this. It's your decisions that got you there. Don't make those same decisions again. Mm. Heard people in prison, God, if you ever get me out of this prison, I'll live for you. So I went to jail and I found Jesus. I didn't know he was locked up. But yes, he's, he's there too. And then they get out and they do the same thing. That first thing I do when I get out, I'm going to get revenge on that person that got me in here. And then I'm going to need some money, so I'm going to rob a liquor store. And they make the same stupid decisions. All right. I don't need to dwell there. I need to go on. Um, um, so, so this is the year of the open door. So I believe the decisions that we're making in 5783, we will walk into in 5784. Uh, I said that the... Uh, Gimel, the, the three in that 83 was the sign of the camels, or at least the camels are coming. And a lot of people connected that with Isaiah chapter 60. It talks about we're going to have the, the camels of the heathen come, gather to us. They'll start coming to us. The wealth of the nations will come to us. Mm. They're coming. But in 84, they arrive at your doorstep. The church of Laodicea. They were given a choice. Jesus said, I'm standing at the door of your heart. I'm knocking. What is your decision? Are you going to let me in? If you let me in, I'll sup with you, and you can sup with me. I said the rabbis were saying that 83 was the year of decision, but they said the year of 84 is the year of consequence. It is a result of your decisions. So door number one, you see. You can have the Old Testament covenant. I'm surprised. I, I saw a, a, a conference or covenant, uh, a convention, and they called, they, they changed the name of their denomination to the Covenant Keepers. Mm -hmm. The Covenant Keepers. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, that, I don't know. It sounds good, but did they think about it? Mm -hmm. Door number one, Old Testament covenant. Got to keep the covenant. And you get all the goody goodies. But door number two is the New Testament. The New Testament covenant. Here's what it says in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 5. Or do you not know that as many as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in his likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Yeah, yeah. All right. I just need to give a little preamble to that. Because throughout the history of man, every time man made a covenant with God, God didn't fail. That's great. God's batting 100%. But every single time, man failed. That's bad. Man's batting 100%. God made a covenant with Noah. He made a covenant with Adam. They failed. He made a covenant with Moses and, and the, the children of Israel. They all failed. You're guilty of one, you're guilty of them all. And you had to be so concerned. You had to sacrifice the perfect lamb. If the lamb was flawed, there was a problem. Cain figured that out way back in the garden, just outside the Garden of Eden. I didn't offer the right sacrifice. I failed. Now I can't uh, have the, the, the goody goodies. The, I, I broke the covenant. But in the New Testament, Jesus Christ came as a man. Jesus, who is God, came to earth as a man. Born of a woman could be called the son of God and the son of man. Lord. He said, you know what? I'll keep the sacrifice. I'll keep the covenant. 
I'll be the sacrifice. I'll keep the covenant. And you know what? From that day to this, man's covenant with God has never been broken through Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ was the man who's kept the covenant. He was he who knew no sin became right. sin for us. He never sinned. I don't care what the new Chinese Bible says. He has never sinned. You know, they're, they're beginning to infiltrate the word of God. Yeah. I like my electronic Bible. I have several, a couple dozen on my electronic Bible. But it's so easy for them to subtly change things. Mm -hmm. They're changing things in the book. So you can't read Uncle Tom's Cabin the same way. You can't read uh, uh, a, a lot of the stories because of political correctness. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to be offended. Mm -hmm. Some people need to be offended. How will you know that you're, you're doing wrong unless you're being told? We read already that God chastens those he loves. People can't stand being corrected. But anyway, so, so Jesus said, I'm keeping the covenant once and for all. And so all we have to do is identify with Jesus Christ. We say, okay, Jesus Christ, you come into my heart. And we become one. Who's, whosoever cometh to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So here in Romans it's saying that we are baptized with Christ. We enter into death with him. Spiritually. Because we accept him, we go through the same thing he went through. As he hung on the cross, that was us hanging on the cross. He said, I'm doing it all for you. So I'm representing you on the cross. I'm dying. We died with him. Our will, our nature, all of that has died with Jesus Christ, and then he was buried. All of that garbage was buried with Christ. Yes, 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 Jesus. But then it says, he was resurrected. He was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. So then it says, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Jesus is now walking in the newness of life. He's receiving all the rights and the privileges of being crucified, died, and resurrected again. And we who identify with Christ, we call ourselves Christians, Christ-like, we're like Christ, because we identify with his death, we identify with his burial, and this is what we fail to do, we've got to identify with his resurrection. So many Christians just identify with the Jesus before the cross, but what we've got to do, we've got to identify with the Jesus after the cross. Yes. 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 Here's something that's amazing. When Jesus was talking about John the Baptist, he said, there's not a greater man born of a woman on the face of the earth. This is when Jesus, before he died. He said, John the Baptist is the greatest man. And I'm thinking, wow. Moses was pretty awesome. David, he, was, he had some flaws, but he was pretty cool. What about Enoch? Walk with God. But you said John the Baptist is the greatest. But what's more amazing, you read the next verse. He said, but the least of you in the kingdom of God is greater than the greatest. You're greater than the goat. The goat ain't got nothing on you. He said, the least in the kingdom. Yes. I don't know if the least in the kingdom is in here today, but if, if you are, you're better than John the Baptist. You've got it better. Because why? Because John the Baptist, he chose door number one. He had to do everything perfect to get the goody goodies. But door number two says, if we identify ourselves with Christ, don't forget to identify yourself with the risen Savior. John writes in 1 John, I think it's chapter 3, he says, uh, as he is, as Jesus is right now, so are we in this world. Well, he, he's just talking about how uh, our spirit bands are clean from sin. Well, you, you, can, you can have that. That's good. But I think it's a little bit more than that. I'm pretty sure Jesus doesn't catch colds. I'm pretty sure Jesus doesn't have cancer, prostate or otherwise. I'm pretty sure his blood pressure is pretty good. Heart rate is great. He can remember. He's very clear. He probably doesn't wear contact lenses or glasses. 
I can imagine Jesus does not use a hearing aid. I'm just saying. He does not use orthopedic shoes. He doesn't have to wear a girdle to hold it all in. Maybe I should try one. But, but Jesus is awesome. He's walking in divine health. He's walking in the covenant promises. He's walking in the victory that he died and rose again for all believers to have. This is door number two. 1 Peter 2, verse 24, it says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on a tree that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you... No, it's not our heal. This is New Testament. It says you were healed. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, all of your healings were finished. And I don't know why the church hasn't emphasized that and pushed that more right from the start. But before Jesus can come back, we, the people of God, have to walk in divine health. Hallelujah. You see, we, we, we don't have to. We shouldn't have to have healing lines in the church. We're going to have healing lines in the church right now. But we shouldn't have to. The healing should take place in your homes and the sidewalk when you see someone. Your neighbor should say, how is it? Uh, I went to the doctor just the other day, first time in about eight years. No, exactly eight years. Uh, and, and she said, what medications are you on? Uh, probably too much greasy chicken and fried rice. That's about too much sodium, uh, maybe. That <laughs> what? And I think my mother was the same way. Went to the doctor. What medication are you on? Uh, what do you mean? Right. Like vitamins? Right. No, no, somebody said. Uh, no. But God can keep us, and he wants yes. us to expect that and believe yes. that. Yes. Mm. yes, thank you, Lord. Mm. In recent modern history, in the late 40s, early 50s, they began discovering something they called quantum physics. It didn't fit the, 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 the restrictions of classical physics. And, and I, I really shouldn't be trying to explain it because I barely understand it myself. But there is a phenomenon they call uh, the, what is it? The law of intention and design, <clears throat> scientifically proven. You, you talk to a a physicist about the stuff that comes from the sun. Is it a photon or is it an electron? Is it a light? Is it energy or is it matter? Hmm. And the, the debate rages is that I don't, whenever we try to test it, if we test to see if it's a, a photon, if we test to see if it's light, it says, yes, it is light. But then if we test it to see if it's matter, photons, electrons beaming at us, the answer is yes, because of, the, and they call it now the law of intention. What I intend and expect to see is what I get. And they, I, the, the experiments that go beyond that, I, I can't really, I won't even get into. But that's amazing. God shifted the universe so that we can have what we expect. We have been conditioned and programmed from birth to be afraid of things. I know it's with good intentions. Our parents say, don't run out in the street. You get hit by a car. Don't play with fire. You'll burn the building down. But when you get older, when you grow up, when you mature, you better run out in the street sometimes. Yeah. You don't want to be locked down. You got to play with fire sometimes. You, you, you won't be able to cook out tomorrow. When you're older, the rules change. You don't have the same restrictions. And those fears should be let go of. Yes. Yes. I'm not afraid to cross the street because I know. Yeah. I'm not afraid to drive a car. They don't let children drive cars. Because it's dangerous. They don't let children play with guns because they're dangerous. But there are things that adults are allowed to have because they know better. And God says, I want to unleash power and anointing on you. I want to uh, unleash the resurrection power of Jesus Christ on you. 
that as I am right now, yeah. sitting above the world, on my throne, yeah. as I am, I want you to sit upon thrones. Yeah. I want you to walk in victory. I want you, yeah. and because it's Healing Sunday, I'm going to emphasize how I want you to walk in health. Yeah. It says, 1 Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes you were healed. It's already done. I know our minds have problems with that, but Jesus said, I paid the price. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Glory God. Oh, my time's up already. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's okay. I just gave him something. Another 40 minutes. Um, I'm just going to end with this. Bless the Lord. By whose stripes you were healed. You see, we can only walk to the light that we emit. So if you don't give off much light, you intimidated about walking so fast, so far, until your light catches up. This thought is trying to leave me, but I'm, I'm holding on to it. It's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> There's three levels of understanding or knowing. Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You see, just because you have some knowledge doesn't mean you know the truth. The news media is spitting out knowledge all the time. Universities are teaching knowledge all the time. But sometimes, believe it or not, there really is a, such a thing as fake news. Yeah. There really is a, such a thing as a lie that the university is teaching uh, our, our children. Yeah. So the last, maybe it was, uh, I don't remember when, but I was talking about uh, a friend of mine who was saying how his son, this guy the a minister of gospel, some call him a prophet, grew up in his house, sent him away to a Christian college, and they got him so twisted in just a half a year that he no longer wanted to serve Jesus anymore. He ran off, he left his fiance there in the Christian college, started smoking pot and getting drunk in the bar, and said he didn't want anything to do with Christ anymore. It's, in the, it's he invaded the Christian colleges. Yeah. Although he had a, a, a 20 years of demonstration in his parents' home of the goodness and the glory of God, in just six months, they twisted him so around he wanted nothing to do with Jesus Christ. So, so Jesus said, uh, you shall know the truth, and it's the truth that makes you free. Yeah. There is a level of truth that's simply intellectual. You know it. I know I shouldn't eat all this fried food, but, you know, they made it just for me. I don't want all their hard work to go to waste. So we justify, we have an intellectual wow. level. How many smokers have you talked about? I, I know, I'm, I'm going to quit smoking one day. I, I, my science, I'll never forget, my science teacher in ninth grade, he was a chain smoker. Between every class, he had to smoke. I mean, he smoked all the time. And he said, you know, I did the calculations. They said one cigarette will take this much off your life. And he said, if I smoke at the rate I'm smoking now, I'll still be able to live to 80 years old. <laughs> you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So some of us know things, but we just don't do it because it's just at the intellectual level. It's in our head. But, but then sometimes something happens. Something really shakes us. You know, we're puffing on the cigarettes, then we get a phone call. Oh, so-and-so just died of lung cancer. All of a sudden, the cigarettes go in the trash. I I'm not poking, uh, beating up anybody who smokes. Everybody has something they need to get rid of that's harmful and detrimental. All of a sudden, now, they're weeping and crying because so-and-so died of lung cancer from smoking all their life, and now I know I'm smoking, so I'm going to stop smoking. Yeah, yeah. And so they stop smoking from then to the funeral, they're crying, crying every day, thinking about it. Then they convince themselves the only thing that's going to make this sadness go away is if I smoke, because they've gotten past that emotion. That happens to so many Christians. They got it on the intellectual level. They come to church on Sunday because they got an awesome B, was it B8? 12H Hammond organ and an organist that like just came down from heaven. B3, yeah, that's it. B3 organ, 
and they got a drawer that just won't quit. You know, Holy Ghost party, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. We get all revved up and you say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to leave those friends alone. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put all that past behind me. Yeah, yeah. And they start jumping and shouting. There's nothing wrong with shouting. Please don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with great music, great singing, great song. Nothing wrong with that. But we do the same thing now. That intellectual knowledge of the, of the scripture and the word of God gets down into our emotions. And we get all excited. Yeah, I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to trust in the Lord till I die. Then they go home and Monday comes and the mailman delivers some guy named Bill. <laughs> Bill shows up at the house. God, how am I gonna do this? I can't pay my bills. I don't have enough money. All my money's spent. Telephone disconnect. All of a sudden, they forgot all about trusting God. And then don't let someone come in the house when they're all frustrated about the bills. And they go slapping them around. What you doing here? Sit down. Shut up. Be quiet. <laughs> you forgot just Sunday you were saying, I'm going to treat everybody right. They didn't do anything to you. You're just in a bad mood. God said, I want to get past the intellectual level. All of you are Bible scholars. You can quote scriptures to me oh, oh, as good as I can. Uh, I know because I say, what's Ephesians 3.20? And you spit it right up. I know. <laughs> Mountain that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask a thing. Uh, and some of you, you know, you, you've been to those serves. That old man, that guy could preach. Yeah, man, that guy, oh yeah, when he got into the low gear, started holding his gear, his ear. Mm -hmm. I'm sometimes up and sometimes down, almost level to the ground. And yeah, yeah, he preached. Oh, I'm going to live right because he said Mary had a little land. His fleece was white as snow and everywhere that Mary went. Oh yeah, that land was sure to go. Yeah, now I'm going to live right. And as soon as you get in, back in the air conditioning and cool down a little bit. Uh, yeah, same old, same old. But God said, I want to get it down to the cellular level. I believe that's where it got in David. Somebody said, uh, your flesh will never be saved. But David said, he said, my heart and my flesh Panneth after the living God. My flesh craves that feeling. I can't describe it. Sometimes I, I get in the presence and it feels like, a, I don't know, a, a low level of electricity is surging through my mind. My flesh is actually addicted to that. And because I can feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. My, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. And sometimes we just got to stay in our prayer room, in our place of prayer. I don't care if it's in the shower or driving in your car, kneeling, sitting, standing, walking, or running. You can get in the presence of God and just stay there. God, I'm going to stay right here until I hear from you, until I feel you. That's what the young folks say today. Do you feel me? God is saying, do you feel me? And if you say no, he's saying, you need to stay a little longer. Uh, yes. Yes. You need to stay a little longer. Yes. God said, do you feel me? Yes. Do you feel me now? Yes. You need to stay a little longer. And I don't mean just running down the list of, God, I want, I want, give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. But I want you to stay in my presence. Thank you, Stand still. Yes. I think the girls were singing about the breath of God. Breathe, oh breath of God. Yes. And as God breathes, Let's inhale the breath of God. And you know something? I'm, I'm learning. Uh, we go into. Uh, th there's a, a phrase. Uh, I'm trying to stop. Uh, I'm not trying. I am stopping. Uh, there's a phrase I think that's, that's a little bit worn out. It's come almost cliche ish. It's, we're in warfare. We're the Christians. Warfare. I've been battling with the devil all day long. And, and sometimes. When we're praying for something and all these doubts are coming around our mind, we start focusing on the doubt and we're going to battle them. We start fighting with these doubts. Yeah. You know you don't have enough money. You know, Lord, give me, make a way out of nowhere. You know you don't have enough money. The, 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 your boss is on the verge of firing you anyway. And we start going, that, the blood of Jesus is getting you. I'm not going to be fired. I, I, I'm not blah, 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 blah. And, 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 and the devil just snatches us away just that quick. But the Bible says, Jesus says, agree with thy adversary quickly. 
Don't even engage. Don't waste your power fighting with the devil. Know who you are. You are greater than him. So when those thoughts come to, yeah, the boss is mad. Good for him. That's his problem, not mine. Lord, I thank you. The finances are coming. I just breathe you in. You said, if I abide in you, your words abide in me. I shall ask what I will, and it shall be given. This is door number two. And the devil said, well, well, well you know, you, you stretched the truth. Well, come to think of it, you flat out lied last week. I said, yeah, 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 but thank God for the Jesus. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I stand not guilty. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't break the covenant. And you know what? As a child of God, uh, you can never break the covenant. Never, because Jesus is keeping the covenant. You can try as hard as you might, but the best you can do is step out from underneath the covenant. Yeah. The curse still doesn't come upon you. Yeah. Just the craziness of the fallen world comes upon you. Mm -hmm. Just circumstance comes on you. Yeah. But I'd rather be under the covering. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd rather walk in the healing anointing. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been, I tell you, I've been experiencing this so much. I just stand still. No matter what the opposition says, I just stand still and acknowledge yes. your presence. And I just say, God, yes. you're so good. Yes, yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. I was in a situation just recently. Yes. Uh, I needed something from this company. And on the phone, they said, well, we, we'd love to help you, but we can't help you today. We don't do that on whatever day of the week that is. So, OK, I'll be right there. Went down there. Well, we understand your situation, but uh, we, we, we can't help you today. Mm. Yeah, all, all right. Um, is there someone else I can talk to? Wait a minute, I'll see. Yeah, no, I talked to my supervisor, uh, and they said they can't do it today. You have to come back tomorrow. Well, you know, I could have made a good argument. You know, I drove a long way, I was blah, 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 blah. He said, can someone else I can could you go to the office? Go to the office. I don't know who they call. Come back. They said, all right, we're going to get your car together. We're going to get your stuff together. Lady comes out of the office, down to us, asks a question. And she snaps at us. <clears throat> and I just had to laugh inside because they gave me what I wanted. They gave me just what I asked for, although I got three or four people saying, no, it just can't happen today. I got the secretary making phone calls for me, and she's mad at me. But she did it anyway. And that's how it is if we just stand still and see the salvation of God. And I'm expecting even greater. See, these are just little rehearsals and practices. You've got to stand still. every little situation Every little situation. Yes, yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm laughing at the devil right now because uh, uh, the news reports that there's another strand of COVID going around right now that cannot be detected with nasal swabs. Yes. It can't be detected because you don't have a high temperature. Mm -hmm. But that some of the symptoms are you, you cough and you, you get headaches. Like, my, I, I had a migraine headache for the first time in I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. And the next day I had a headache. I'm like, Dudley, you are so funny. <laughs> you always show your hand. I don't have COVID, and I don't even want to argue about it. I walk in divine health. I'm healed before I get sick. I don't know what's wrong with you. I've been praying for my neighborhood in a different way, praying against violence in the city. Don't you know the next day there was a carjacking and shootout in front of my house? I come outside. I want to see if I got bullet holes in my car. The police are there. They cordon off just my house. And I'm looking at these bullets in the street. They are full, unspent bullets. Yeah. How did that happen? Nothing came out of the gun except the bullet got ejected. When they fired the gun, whole bullet. I took pictures. I said, Della, you are so funny. I am so excited about what God is about to do. If he can do it for my house, I know he can do it for the people of God. I know he can do it for your house. I will not be afraid of the terror that yes. flies by night, nor the destruction that yes. wasted that new day. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand. But if 
shall not come nigh thee. I'm going to choose door number two. I'm going to choose a new covenant because Jesus has gone. He said, it is finished by his stripes. I'm already here. I'm already delivered. I'm already set free. I don't know how long you're going to stay in the valley of decision, but my decision was made right from the jump. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. The world may be in the valley of decision. The people in the church are in the valley of decision. They can't decide, but it's already been decided. Jesus said that you are blessed, and I'm not going to argue with them. He said, I've come to give you life and to give it more abundantly. I'm not going to argue with you. Yes, Lord. I am the bride of Christ. What kind of groom wouldn't want the best for me? What kind of groom wouldn't want me to be in health and, and whole and perfect? Yes. We're entering into the age of perfection. Yes. Enjoy it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Keep on. Keep on standing. Standing. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians, after you've done all to stand. Yes. Stand. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil's going to tell you where you missed it, where you failed. He said, but that's okay. I made up for it. Just say, not guilty by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But it starts by you choosing door number two, the new covenant. You can try and keep the old covenant. Like the this organization I heard, they call themselves the covenant keepers. There sounds to me like they're going to strive to keep the covenant. But see, if you, the problem with that, if you don't keep it, you get all the curses. In this door number two, Jesus has already kept the covenant. And because I love him, I'm going to do what pleases him. And that alone is going to keep me from in the right path. That's going to keep me in the right way. And if I mess up a little bit, I remember that I'm a child of God. And what good parent uh, spanks their children because they fell when they learned how to walk? What? All right, I'm going. I know. There was a, 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 a child learning to ride a bicycle, and um, yeah, he rode past mom, said, look, mom, no hands. Uh, he rode past again, look, mom, no no, no feet. Uh, and then he rode top past the third time, said, look, mom, no teeth, because he had fallen and broken out all of his teeth. And so uh, uh, did the mother then beat him? No. Uh, he fell, right? But the mother didn't beat him. She picked him up and said, we're going to try and get those teeth glued in. And then when you're all healed up and feeling better, we're going to put you back on that bicycle. And that's what God says. Yeah, you might have fallen. You might have messed up. You might have lost a few teeth. You might have gotten a black eye. You might have scraped your knee and ruined your Easter suit. But he said, oh, you're going to get right back up. Oh, we're going to stitch up that Easter suit. And we're going to mend your wounds. And we're going to put you right back out there. He said, I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. And your cup will not run. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid the price for those mess ups and those, for those mistakes. And I, being a good, good father, know how to take care of my children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard somebody say, I don't pray for my needs anymore because if I pray for my wants, my needs are taken care of. Uh, yeah, I only need, you know, a few, few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars a year to live. But if I pray for my desires, I pray for wealth. Don't you think those few thousand dollars would be taken care of? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm, I'm way past time. I'm, I'm almost saying that for second. But all you have to do is choose door number two. And that door number two is Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Choose Jesus Christ. Yes. And some people don't choose Jesus because it's way too simple. Yes. It's way too simple. Yes. There's all these people out there giving lectures, telling you how to improve your life and charge you ten thousand dollars to come to that conference yeah. Yeah, no. but jesus said believe on the lord jesus christ and you shall be saved he said whosoever shall call on the name of jesus shall be saved that's all you have to do is call on jesus and he'll come into your heart be the lord of your life you'll be part of the family of god you'll be eligible yeah. for the benefits yeah. Yeah. Thank that jesus christ has provided Thank you, jesus. Thank you, Lord. but i just want to encourage you not only to ask jesus to come into your heart and Ask him to forgive you of your sins, but ask the Holy Spirit to come in. Yes, yes. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. Those things you don't understand. Mm -hmm. yes. The Holy Spirit will teach you uh, to, to, to what, what, what traditions that you've been taught all your life that just you just feel like are right. He'll teach you, no, there's a better way. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily wrong. It got your parents where it got them, but he said, I'm going to show you a better way. Yes, yes. 
I I'm going to show you some new things. And he'll teach you. And then go a step further and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to give me that prayer language. Speak in other tongues where I can speak mysteries to God. And, and, and so that I can pray the perfect prayer. What needs to be prayed for? And if you do those things, wow, your life will be so amazing. So amazing. Doors will begin to open. Things will begin to happen. As you let Jesus come into your heart. And listen to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. God bless you. Deliverance is taking the land. Hope you don't stay long in the valley of decision. Hope you decide to make Jesus Christ your choice. Amen. God bless you. Shalom. Until the next time.